So this video will show the model creation um, in QGIS with um, switching back and forth between the slides. Feel free to pause at any point. So the first step is to um, create, is to take the um, two folders, input data and bin, from the folder that we have provided and uh, put them in a uh, folder where you will complete the exercises. Um, you can paste them there and then move the uh, SQLite up uh, one and uh, paste a copy of it there. It's a good idea always to keep it back up. So then we uh, open QJS, start a new project and connect to this database that we just uh, copied. Go to the lake folder, connect to the database, click connect, and then we'll see some model objects. If we choose to show also the objects that do not have any geometry, we can then select the appropriate tables. This will load the previously created model. We need to update certain paths for the model to work. We open the tables and change the necessary fields. What you see is the previous version and you need to change this to whatever it is on your computer. Then we can save the table and uh, stop editing, close it. And uh, then we change the program locations. Um, it has a path and executable field. The path field is so that um, the model is compatible with older versions of the plugin. And once we set that, we save and stop editing and close the table. So the changes are accurate, and then we can proceed to save the project, give it the name, T Lake, and then we can proceed to save it. Um, using the same file name, tlake. In the uh, folder that you've chosen for this project. So now that uh, we've imported the previous model, we can run. We select the two boundary conditions present. Click run. and the model should execute successfully. Now we can import uh, the results of that model run through FreeWatt post-processing and view model results. When importing a raster, you always have to specify the projection system. So here you see what the groundward elevations look like after that first calculation. We can extract contours. We have to select the right raster, give an output name, and then set the contour distance. And again, set the projection. So this will create contours for the chosen raster. We can also view the volumetric budget. And as you see, that's also as it is in the instructional PDF. So you can see that here there are the files created by Modflow, and we can open the listing file and scroll to the very bottom to see the budget for this model. So once that's uh, complete, 
we can move on to the next step of loading the lake shapefiles into the model. The shapefiles are provided in the data folder. You can navigate through the browser panel to the folder, go to input data, and then drag the two shapefiles into the model. So we need to use these shapefiles to deactivate certain cells in the model. And we can do that with the spatial query tool. Selecting cells from layer one, which intersect with the shapefiles for the lake layer one. Now if we hide the raster and uh, show only the layer one, we can see that the cells we want are selected. Then we open the L1 attribute table with a right click. And then we can edit the active field and set those cells to zero um, and update only selected cells. Once that's been done, save and exit and deselect. And if we now change the style, of the layer by setting categorized view, selecting the active field, so click classify, and then we'll be able to see that some cells are now active and others are inactive. Now we repeat the same thing for layer two using the other shapefile, the lakes L2 shapefile. Now this query will return um, a different number of cells. But uh, again, we go into the L2 attribute table and change the active field to zero for the selected cells. Now again, we can change the style of L2 using the active field. And if we deselect, we see that now also these cells are inactive. Now in the next step, we'll change the elevation of some cells to represent the bathymetry of lake uh, two. For this, we select only the lake two of the lake's L2 shapefile. And then, using the spatial query, we run the query again, selecting cells from layer 2, which intersect with the shapefile, but this time only with the selected part of the shapefile. So as you see, not all of the intersect has been selected, and then again we can open the attribute table of L2, and this time we're not changing the active field, but we are changing the bottom field so that the bottom of the cell, the elevation of the bottom of the cell gets changed. Now we've set it for all of these cells, but we're gonna go a step further. We deselect and we select the central four cells of that lake and we're again going to change the L2 bottom elevation to make the lake even deeper in those cells. And what this will do is it will, um, as you can see, we'll be able to see in the next slide, it will change the uh, elevations of the lakes so that now all three have slightly different bathymetries. So in order to be consistent, we will copy the bottom elevations of layer two to the top elevations of layer three.
now that we've um, changed the model cells and specified the inactive cells, we'll use the modflow um, create lake layer tool to actually add our lakes with their properties to the model. The first thing that we do is we fill in the uh, solver parameters and uh, create the lake layers. This will create one new model data object for every layer in your model, which will then be assigned, used to assign the position of the lakes. Once that's been done, we will fill in the lake parameters for each lake, for lake one first. So we fill in the fields according to the PDF. And then click on add. We will leave the uh, precipitation evaporation uh, runoff and withdrawal empty for now. And as you see, the first lake was just created. So the lake parameters fields have been reset and we can enter the information for the next two lakes from the PDF. And uh, each time we press add to create a new lake. So now we've created lake two and we're just adding the parameters for lake three. The data that we're entering here will be entered into the model database, but it can always be changed through this interface. The tables in the model database will not be loaded into the screen, but are still present and are seen here. So now we've created the lake properties, but we need to associate uh, model cells with the lake locations. So we can close this um, window. And uh, because the lake shape files have the appropriate properties, we can copy the attributes um, of lake ID from the shape files to the L1 lake layers. And once this has been done, we can visualize the position of the lakes in L1 lake. We select the lake field, and then we can see that most of the cells have a value of zero. but our lakes then are numbered one, two, and three. We do the same for layer two, copying from the lakes L2 shapefile to the L1, L2 lake layer. We can change the style of this layer as well to show us the lake layer in categorized view. And here we see the position of the two lakes in this layer as well. So now the lakes have their properties and are located in the model. And the last thing we need to do is change the layer property flow of the upper two layers. Now we're going to change the two layers to be convertible. And we're going to change lay wet to yes with the capital Y and then save the changes. So once that's complete, we now have the lakes in our model and we can run our model. We open the run model screen and select all three boundary conditions. The well, the constant head and the lake and we click on run. The model should execute successfully.
and then we can proceed to open our results. The listing file will now show lake seepage and uh, if we scroll up we can also in the listing file see the lake budget summaries. And uh, we can also import the contours and the raster of the new model results to show us how the contours have changed. So again, through FreeWatt post-processing and view model results, we can import these rasters. I'm removing the old ones in this step, and uh, now these three are the new model results. So we create the contours, making sure that we have the correct raster selected, and we create the contour again with 5 meters. And once this has been done, the new contours are in the model, and we can just uh, drag them to the top of our view. And uh, hide some of the other layers. And if we want, we can also uh, import the base map to show behind the rasters. So now we can compare the previous contours to the new ones. Once this has been done, um, we have successfully completed uh, this tutorial. Uh, the next and last slide shows some general guidelines um, when putting lakes into a model. And uh, if you have any additional questions or queries or have problems with the tutorial, please do not hesitate to send us an email or to get in contact with us through this website um, and we'll try our best to be able to solve your problems. Um, apart from that, um, good luck modeling. Thank you.